you beautiful collectors and action figure fans, it's the one and only Optibottom is coming to you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 427 Iron Man Mark 47 from Spider-Man Homecoming. Their 19th figure in their movie masterpiece diecast series. This one has really become a bit of a fan favorite. Despite the fact that it is just a repaint of the Mark 46, a lot of people, including myself, really like the look of this guy. Now, if you're familiar with the diecast figures, you're very familiar with the packaging already. You get kind of two sections. You got a really nice image of Iron Man flying around. You got the Spider-Man Homecoming logo right down there. You uh, take a look at the top and it says Spider-Man Homecoming with some nice web stuff there in the background, which looks cool. The side here has that image that kind of carries over. You can see Iron Man Mark 47. The back of the package here has the cast and the crew responsible for making it, as well as the various warnings. And then again, much like I said, like all those other Iron Man figures, it does slide up just like so and then on the inside here you can see you have the heavy duty foam with iron man mark 47 kind of engraved in the front you gotta get this out hey, come on it's, yeah well we'll just go down here and we'll do that and set that there and then you have the coffin sort of thing that you can then just slide this down like so and a whole bunch of stuff is going to fall because hey i left the suit in there usually i don't let you guys see that because that, I, I think that's a spoiler so we'll put that there Shh, sh all right, so now you've seen it, now you don't have to watch the review, right? Nah, I'm just joking. We're going to get this out here and we're going to have a lot of fun. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have the Iron Man Mark 47 from Spider-Man Homecoming opened up and out of its packaging. And starting off first with all of his accessories... Obviously, a lot of this stuff is reused from the Mark 46, but there were a few additional accessories. A couple of the stuff that are carried over are obviously the hands. So in addition to the two fisted hands that are currently on him, he also comes with a pair of right and left or articulated hands that you can see the fingers articulate very nicely. Gorgeous paint on here. You can see very nice silver with the clear you know, repulsor blast right in there. The opposite side has some red, a little bit of gold on there as predominantly this suit is red and silver. I do like the additional gold accents on there. That looks really nice. And I, I love very reflective, especially in terms of the silver paint. Absolutely gorgeous looking. There is some nice wear on there as well, but that's normal. Uh, you also do have a pair of repulsor blasting hands. You can see that the uh, the wrist section here plugs in just like so, allowing you to have the repulsors up in an angular kind of blast. Now, instead of putting you know blast effects that plug on there, they do include an extra pair of repulsor blasting hands that have the blast already attached you can see you got a nice orangish yellow base section then it comes to the top where it gets more clear i actually like this i think it looks really nice uh, many of you know that i'm not a huge fan of the blast effects as i think it looks a little bit toyish but this looks okay i like the different spread out nature of some of the little flames on here it gives it a you know, more organic look which i do like so all of those we have gotten before, so not really anything different. You also do get the shoulder sections that are attached via magnets. I'll show how to do that here in a little bit, but you got the little open section right there that has them shooting out little missiles and such. Uh, again, same parts as what we got on the Mark 46. And then you also do get the missile section that opens on his uh, forearms here. You can see great detail with the missiles. Again, really nice intricate detail coming in here to take a closer look you can see a lot of nice molded detail on the inside there and then of course you got the missile with some nice red paint on there some of the things that we kind of lose when we look at these iron man figures and I, I try to touch on as much as possible but even i sometimes just kind of forget about them is all the little molded detail that's deep beyond what you actually see i mean that is spectacular i got a real kind of refresher lesson when i was looking at the hulkbuster and it's nice to look at this one as well and see all those same elements just spectacular so again those are all reused parts now he also does come with a couple reused you know, head sculpts uh, obviously 
this is the one you can lift this up and you can flip the switch right there and you can see this is uh, the actual helmeted head uh, you do actually get two of them which kind of leads into one of his other accessories but you do have this and then you also do get in a reuse of the Civil War version for Tony Stark uh, the difference though here is that it's not battle damaged bringing in the battle damaged one you can see he's got the you know the bruise and the black eye going on there but you can see also he's kind of looking off on the side so whereas the original one has as I'm looking straight this one kind of has to have his head tilted a little to have the eyes looking forward um I don't mind that all that much I do kind of wish that it was just him looking straight but you can kind of position him where the head is a little bit turned and that doesn't look all that strange but I mean again you look at the sculpt on there and absolutely spectacular great detail with his little beard and goatee nice sculpted detail for his hair everything else is exactly the same it's just you get a slight kind of cleaner look I mean but but you can see just how great they really nailed you know the bruising and black eye there i mean i'm really quite impressed with it so you do get that now it's kind of weird i mean you also do get the little neck section here uh, that goes around uh, the thing though that is weird about this is that he didn't really just have his head exposed while still wearing the suit that's something that is carried over from the mark 46 which i don't necessarily mind i mean people can take this head and use it on a you know nice tony stark figure or something like that but uh, he never did have just his head exposed when he was wearing this now there was the scene where he was wearing the suit and then it opened up and he came out in that a fraction of a second the helmet opened and i guess you could kind of say that it was just his head but it was almost simultaneous where the you know, helmet opened up and then the rest of the suit opened so that's kind of Eh, if you ask me in addition to that you also do get a pair of sunglasses now we gotta come in because these things are tiny uh, you can see there there is a little bit of a blue tint there but he wears these very nicely uh, you just slip them over his ears they are a little flimsy so do be careful when you're doing it so if why can't i put there we go so you can create that look which is a look that he used when he was remote controlling the mark 47 again not bad and i think that uh, some you know one six scale collectors will probably use this to create a you know tony stark in a normal outfit kind of look to go along with this but again he never had the face where he was wearing the sunglasses while he was wearing the suit so that does kind of i don't want to say put me off but it's just they probably could have cut this out and lowered the price a little bit obviously like i said you do get the little neck piece um i don't know if they actually would have done that i mean it's hot toys so i don't think they would have made it cheaper for us but you do get this i do like the fact that they included the glasses so that you can do something with it but again not entirely screen accurate so you do get that and then like i said you do get the uh, the helmeted section uh bringing in the other one uh that really doesn't change too much it's a little bit more scuffed then the original uh the paint looks exactly the same the gold looks the same the red pretty much looks the same so this is for all intent and purposes just a straight up reuse again does it bother me because it, it it fits in with this but what is really cool and coming up to the top i gotta take a look at some of the new accessories is he does come with a different head here that you can see it just pops in and out and then you would take obviously either this one you can put that in there or you could take tony's you'd put this kind of in the back you just sit that kind of right there and then you can put that there which i mean yeah cool i mean obviously it's much longer looking because i didn't put it all the way down but what i really like about this sculpt is it has magnets well those magnets i don't think are supposed to just come off like that uh, those go underneath there but you know, everybody that knows hot toys knows that they are not very good with their gluing and i'm gonna have to fix that but it is just an open helmet which is cool and now obviously i'm not going to be able to show it very well but it did just open like that and show a completely empty suit basically that tony stark when he was walking around like this was controlling now you can see some nice internal detail in there well although my camera wants to focus on this guy i mean you can see some nice molded in detail on the inside there which does look really good and you know, both sides kind of have that and then you can look on the back of the actual faceplate, and you can see some nice molded detail as well uh, so it typically just will 
kind of you kind of have to wedge it in there to sit just like that and then yeah i mean obviously you can use this one if you really wanted to this doesn't light up or anything i don't think there's a way that they could have done that but when you have the magnets on there it can also then sit up like that so i'm gonna have to fix the magnet section but that's probably going to be my preferred look for this guy i really like how they included that so that's definitely an additional accessory that i really do like uh, putting that guy on there we're just going to set that off because i got to show off the lights and such so you have that now some of the other new features that you get well i mean these are also reused but these are the little blasts for the feet you come around here to the bottom they plug in on the underside just like that and again in doing so you get a real nice appreciation for the detail on the bottom of the foot some nice silver paint some nice sculpting and everything really quite impressive there so again these are reused pieces as well uh, what is new uh, in addition to that you know, new helmet is he comes with a little pod here that was shooting out the little kind of i don't i don't even know what that you would call them little rocket things or something that helped to you know, a spoiler alert helped to you know bring the two halves of the boat together so this is the little device that was flying around it's upside down that was shooting them and then these are the little guys themselves and then what is cool is you do get these little fire blasts that plug into the back here you can plug that in you get two of these little blasts and you can see you got little articulated arms that when they're flying around they can go like that and then they and then and then they shoot a little fire blast from that. Does this fit on there? No, that doesn't fit on there. Oh, I don't think it does. That looks a little bit... Yeah, that's way too big. So you can do that, and then you can plug this little blast in there as well. And then you can actually take these, and these will peg in here. It is a little bit tricky to get them to push in. Just kind of force them in there. And you got little bits right here that uh, it's hard to see, but these kind of stick out. So pushing kind of hurts. <laughs> so you can go like that and then put one down there. Just give that a nice little push. Uh, they do, you have to make sure you, you know, well, not bend them, but it, it is tricky to get them in there because it does hurt <laughs> when, you're, when you're pushing on the base here. So just be careful as you're doing it and ow you you suck at this paul so <laughs> so you could do something like that and have these little guys flying around and going to a make-believe boat or something like that and then what you can also do you got a little piece right here that will attach to the bottom of this peg in there uh, thusly although doesn't really peg in there all that great. No, oh wait, I had it backwards, I think. There we go, rotate that around. And then you have a little a dynamic stand right here that you can plug that in, and you can have these little guys flying all over the place. Now, another thing that is really cool is you got this little thing, which like, oh, well, how's that gonna help anything? Well, what you can do is come around to the display stand itself. You can slide this piece out, then take this plop that right there at the top and then you have a slot that's still on there you can kind of see right there where you line that up and then you can take the little crotch grabber and slide that back down like so so you can position that like so kind of angle this up and you can sit your iron man figure right there and have that kind of off on the back which i think is really cool i love how they did that now one thing that does kind of stink is that you have him standing most of the time he was flying around so why they didn't include a better dynamic stand to get some flying posters with this guy i don't know but the stand itself is really nice you got the spider-man homecoming logo right there you got what well, looks like some spider webs and then kind of like an arc reactor glowing there but you can see a glossy under section there which is really cool just says iron man which that's kind of boring i don't know why they don't put iron man mark 47 but then it says tony stark there also at the bottom so this is a cool uh, additional 
accessory piece that really does help to you know, enhance the display of them i mean i think that that is really very neat one thing that i will say though is in the promotional images that we saw uh, these little bits here weren't as twisted around uh, i mean as you can see they kind of go off on angles i mean you got that orangish yellow color and then it comes down to be more of a clear bat base uh, in the original promo images though these were much more straight um i, I kind of wish they were a little bit more straight just so that it i don't know you, you you could have it going off in a more straight angle i mean i guess in having it like this you can kind of make it look like it's going off into the different locations and stuff so i guess that's okay but first accessories that's everything several reuse parts but some nice new ones that really do help to kind of differentiate this release from what we got with the mark 46 now coming in to take a closer look at the figure again uh, sculpting wise it's the exact same as the previous mark but you get some really cool colors with it obviously you got the red and the gold which is very classic but then as you start coming down to the arms and then even the torso you see more gray more silver almost like an unfinished suit and we never got a reason why you know tony went with this you know after the events of a civil war but there was obviously some serious damage done to it so maybe this kind of represents you know the in-between stage of where he's repairing it maybe he really likes this normally he would just make a brand new one but i think he just really likes this you can see some little gold detail right down there but as you come down to the uh, lower section of the body you can see that that silver and uh, the gray also carries on which i really do like and then you come down to the legs and these are a little bit more in line with what we saw in the civil war version just with the red and the the gold and everything obviously more breakup of that color but i mean just spectacular i, I really love the coloration on this i i don't know I i've said many many times that my favorite suits are always the ones that aren't necessarily the you know, classic looking Iron Man suits and this is definitely one of them. You can see some nice wear on there and if it's one thing that Hot Toys knows how to do is really do a great job with their paint applications and this is definitely one that does shine. Obviously this is the way that the suit was designed to look from the film and now, Hot Toys is just recreating it, but it is absolutely spectacular. Now, for a comparison, obviously, here is the new Mark 47, and here's the Mark 46. And again, you can see that there are a lot of similar elements. I mean, obviously, the helmet is the same. The neck is the same. You can see that the chest area basically here has a very similar look to what the original had. You can come around here to the side and just see that there's a few color differences. You got some gold and red added on here. You got some silver in the back, but this is all silver. You look at the torso bit, and this is all silver, whereas this is red. So again, it's like... It's a in-between sort of suit. Oh, I don't have the back plate on there, but you can see a little gold right there. But then again, you get a lot of the kind of blank looks between it. You come down here to the back of the knee. You can see that this is filled in. You look at the sides here. You can see that the legs have a little bit more of that fill in color. Same down here with the feet, whereas that the 47 has some silver on the actual feet. This one still does, but in a, a different kind of area. So obviously very similar look. And then you look at the arm and again this has well this actually has more red than this one does that that has some silver going on there that has more filled in red uh, especially like here where the gold is that's silver on the original so that's kind of interesting but i mean i i really do love the design of this suit this is what a lot of people really viewed as mostly because of the different arc reactors you know, very fan favorite bleeding edge armor although it's never called that in the movie it's essentially what it looked like and i think a lot of that element still plays in with people liking the mark 47 and this does feature all those same light up features so again i'm going to turn my lights off here but i'm going to tell you where all the light up features are so you got the uh, light up section right here in the top of the head you got the sections down here which turn on the uh, hand sections come around to the back remove this and this will light up the main torso and then you have on the back here you kind of have to pull on the side like stick your finger in here and pull away like that to reveal those so again like i said i'm going to turn all of these on and let you guys see everything this piece comes out like so let me take this one off as well kind of just pull this away like that and then we can get him 
all lit up looking absolutely gorgeous. And here he is lit up like a Christmas tree. You can see you got gorgeous eyes. You look at the torso, you can see moving things out of the way. You can see the very heavy arc reactor there. Some lights coming around. I'm kind of just putting my finger over it so you can see lights coming down the side. You got some here in the front, more along the side. You got some here in the upper part of the arm. They come down and also light up on the forearm right there. You got the light up on the back of the palm. You got two down here in the hip area. Obviously, this arm has those same lights along that side. You come around here to the back. You got some nice bright ones right up here at the top of his shoulder blades. Some down here in his upper butt area. And then you come down to the legs. You got some here on the hips. Both sides have that. And then you got some really nice ones down here on his knee, on his calf. Come around, that, yeah, that's it for that. And then on the opposite side, you got one here on his little knee and then the calf. So, I mean, really quite impressive with the lights. This is definitely a suit that I wish I could keep lit up all the time because it is absolutely gorgeous looking. I know there are some things that you can get, like battery pack things that you can plug in to, you know, replace the batteries and stuff. But I think that the wires that come from that kind of make it look a little ugly so it's not anything i'm ever going to really worry about but that really is super wicked awesome i mean you just turn all that around i mean you can see and with the lights off you can kind of see like the silhouette of his body just hanging out there he looks like a giant christmas tree which is awesome and of course when you turn all the lights on you don't see anything so flipping all these switches back off so i don't burn any of those batteries out as it were uh, for his articulation it is again the exact same that we got with the 46 so the head obviously well you could put that piece back on there the head is on a ball joint right here you get a nice range of motion so you can even get a really good flying pose which this guy did fly around a lot you got the little hinge right here that is on a ball joint as well so that does kind of rotate a little bit because of the way that this is positioned it doesn't rotate all that well i guess i could kind of show you these pieces that do detach and then you just bring in the other put that on there nice magnet that reveals that so uh, again real cool detail but we have seen that before for the shoulders they do rotate these pieces here or on separate ends. oh and actually i forgot to turn these lights on on here there's a little arc reactor thing here on the back of his shoulders you have to take these off to light that up i totally forgot about that but again we have seen it before so you get the idea but these little pieces do flex around this does move but you do really want to extend it out to get the full range of motion you a little butterfly joint and then you got the rotation all the way around there you can lift this and that kind of gets out of the way so you can bring the arms out very nicely so that little the extension joint is really your best friend for the arms it rotates very nicely at the upper part of the bicep he does have two joints here at the elbow that do give about what they say 160 degree range of motion come around here to the back uh, you do have some air flaps these little pieces do go out like you know, if i can get to it and is what your little fingernail in there you got that you come down to the waist that does have a nice range of motion with it you can see it does rotate has a little ball joint allows you to flex it forward and back but then you can also take this and extend this up it's stiff but you can see it extends it very nicely so you get a much greater range of motion and i love how when you extend it the little bottom section here has all that molded detail that really fills everything in so again you get a much further range of motion with that go side to side absolutely terrific sort of extension that really does enhance the range of motion with them you come down here to the hips these little pieces here do lift and get away from the body very nicely so that you can also take these extend these down and angle these out when you just leave them up it does kind of get hindered uh, because of some of this stuff right here but it does move around fairly decently but you can extend it down to get a much further range of motion forward and back in and out all that kind of stuff then you collapse that back up it also does well keep that down also does rotate at the upper part of the thigh right here so again all that articulation very well welcomed gives you a lot of posing options uh, he does have nice bend here at two joints here for the knee then you come down here to the ankles and these these little pieces here you do want to be careful that moves around 
this moves but the uh, ankles do extend down as you can see so you can get a much wider kind of tilt this little piece here does flex a little bit giving you a much better range of motion and then you can collapse that up put that away so all that same articulation that was in the previous suit is here because obviously the molding is the same but that doesn't bother me at all because i really do think that this is a terrific looking suit the previous one was terrific looking just the coloring on this really does make this guy shine now as an iron man fan i absolutely am in love with this suit however i can see where collectors may not want to pick this up one thing that i absolutely loved about the spider-man homecoming movie was that marvel really didn't cram iron man and tony stark down our throats that was one of my biggest concerns when i first saw that he was going to be in the film i wanted it to be a spider-man movie and marvel did a great job of telling that tale without kind of shoehorning you know their golden boy so that being said this suit was only seen a couple times in the film so i can definitely see where some collectors would want to pass on it the exceptions would be giant iron man fans such as myself if that's you this is absolutely a piece that i would recommend if you're a fan of you know the homecoming movie and you want to have kind of a display with them this also would go along great with it now as much as i do like the figure i think hot toys could have done some things differently number one give us a different display stand ironically enough this is the second version of the mark 47 that they've given us the first was a power pose now i'm not all big on the power pose ones i do have some and they serve their purpose but that one can actually be displayed flying which i think this one should be able to do so i would have liked to have seen a different stand but i do love how they include all these little extra accessories that really does help to really add something different to this release also while i like the fact that we get the tony stark portrait i do think that that one could have been left out and in doing so reduce the price of this set a little now, i know it's hot toys they're not going to reduce things in, in favor of saving a buck or anything so we were always going to get that extra head just so that they can keep the price up but seriously though this is a great piece and hot toys has recreated it from the film beautifully so this is a piece that you'd be interested in picking up i would absolutely recommend it to you and to pick it up, all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Sideshow Collectibles where you can check out availability on this as well as the rest of their wide range of Hot Toys once they scale figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video to please hit that thumbs up button. It goes a long way towards helping me out and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or hey, if you already subscribed, now more than ever, it's important to make sure that you're getting those email notifications. We all know just how unreliable that YouTube subscription box is. So to make sure that you don't miss any of my video reviews, click on that little bell right below this video and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, be excellent to each other.